Hello everyone, my name is Don Self. I am a reimbursement consultant out of Texas. I've been asked to put together a mini webinar for you about the billing for the Matrix Neuromed Physical Medicine Services. So let's get started. Anytime you're billing for any service, whether it's diagnostic or otherwise, you have to know what the payer rules are. Medicare has one set of rules, commercials have another. In fact, TRICARE, Workers' Comp, Medicaid, everyone has different sets of rules. So you have to know whose rules you're dealing with, and as those rules change, you have to stay on top of it. Basically, you have to know your payers, because you cannot bill everybody with the same set of rules, since they all have different ones. As you probably already know by now, every audit deals with documentation. You don't all just have to document exactly what you did, but you have to document why was it medically necessary. And then you have to be able to support that to another doctor of the same specialty should that be questioned by the carrier. You also need to make sure you document the reevaluations. Now, I recommend that you document the reevaluations every five treatments. At the end of every five treatments, reeval that patient and then determine whether or not you want to continue. The carriers really appreciate that. You'll find when you're doing that that they're a lot easier to get along with and probably a lot more lax when it comes to additional services that's needed. Document specific diagnosis codes for each modality. Uh, too often we let the billing people determine this diagnosis codes what goes with that modality, etc. That needs to be done by the doctor. And then you also need to make sure you document the services before, were performed by whom. Was it a physical therapy assistant? Was it the EMA? Was it the physician? Was it the nurse practitioner, etc.? That's one thing that the recovery audit contractors and the Blue Cross, Aetna, and United Healthcare uh, auditors will be looking at very carefully. As I said, Medicare has one set of rules. And usually they're the most strict. Now, once in a while you'll find a carrier like Blue Cross in Alabama who seems to kind of go beyond what uh, I've seen most Medicare's do. But you have to make sure that you follow that particular carrier. You also have to document who's supervising and whether it's direct or personal. Keep in mind there's three different levels of supervision. You have general supervision, meaning that the employee is doing the service, but it was ordered by the doctor. The doctor does not have to be on the premises. You have uh, the direct supervision, meaning that the doctor is on the premises, and then you have personal supervision, meaning that the doctor is in the same room when the services are being done. Each carrier may assign their own set of supervision rules. And in order to find the rules for Medicare supervision, you have to check and find what the Medicare NCD, National Coverage Determination, is, or what the Medicare LCD is for your locality. Generally, the localities with Medicare turns out to be state by state. But once in a while, like in California where you have multiple carriers, you may have a different set of LCDs in one part of California that you have in another. Some of the Medicare's national coverage determinations have been around for many years. Some of the state-specific LCDs may change from time to time on a regular basis. So you want to stay on top of those, and you can access those on my website at donself.com. But you, the LCD is going to show you the frequency, the supervision, the diagnostic codes that's required, and any kind of bundling rules. So you really want to try to stay on top of those because they do change pretty often. There are a lot of different CPT and hicks -PICS codes out there to pick from when you're talking about physical medicine or electrical stimulation. It's important, as we talked about, to know which ones are timed, which ones are not. For instance, Medicare requires you use GO283 for Medicare electrical stimulation code, and it's not a timed code. Where if you're looking at non-Medicare, you have two different timed codes you could use, 97032 or 97014. So you may want to check with your commercial carrier to find out how much they are paying on each one and which code they accept. For instance, Medicare stopped taking 97014 back about 2003. You've also got vasopneumatic device, neuro re-education codes. And when we're talking about the timed codes and non-timed, the timed is 15 minutes. And that's total amount of time that you have the patient getting services. It's not per machine, but it's per patient. 
So if you had the patient on a 30 minute timetable, the maximum on time codes you could use would be two, or 45 minutes would be three, etc. Another factor when picking out codes is that you have to figure out whether or not a carrier bundles one service into another, whether or not the correct coding initiative edits precludes you from billing a different one. And it used to be that you had to go to so many different places to find out the CCI edits or how much Medicare's allowed amount was or whether there was an LCD, local coverage determination we talked about for a particular code or not. And so because of that, I created one place to go to called Code Advisor that you can access from my website at donsuff.com. So therefore, you can get all of the information like I'm showing here on the screen. It can be identify the code, pick a code, or just by doing a search on any description or any word in the code. You can see my own viewpoints as to how to bill it, as well as the Medicare pricing, the CCI edits, LCDs, etc. Sometimes Medicare will have specific requirements in order to bill a specific code as to being attended, non-attended, supervision requirements, etc. So what I've tried to do is include in the coding advisor when that happens on each code. Uh, I don't have it on all 7,800 codes right now, but I do have it on a few of them. So as you can see, here's an example of one for 97016. Often I will get asked as to a particular device, whether or not it's matrix or something else, how I recommend that they bill for that particular service. Here's an example. For a typical matrix billing for 30 minutes, you might have one charge of GO283 and a typical Medicare allowed amount in one locality. I picked Houston, Texas as an example. Obviously, it would be more in New York or San Francisco or some other higher priced places, but it was 1409 for that particular code. And then I would say you'd probably have a one charge for neuro re education, 97112, for $34. It does pay better than some other codes. And then you have 97016, one charge of that for vaso pneumatic device. Uh, and you want to make sure you use a GP modifier on these if we're talking about Medicare, as well as some commercial carriers are now requiring the GP modifier as well. It doesn't hurt to put it on there for the commercial carriers, even though it's a hicks Pix modifier. And the GP modifier says that the patient is under a physical therapy plan of care. all that you have to be looking at as well whenever you're talking about the billing. You need to also be looking at uh, whether or not there's additional services you're doing that you're not capturing it. For instance, Medicare will pay you for specific testing that they've outlined uh, in the PQRS that they want you to do at certain intervals for your patients. Uh, you may find also that there's other diagnostics you can be doing on the patient that's going to generate quite a bit of money as well as other counseling that you're probably doing. It's amazing how many offices I find that are signing home health certs that they're never even billing for those because they get those confused with a care plan oversight. Well, that's where it'll come in. I will spend up to an hour on the phone with you and your physician, but the physician must be on the call because I'm going to ask the physician specific questions and then make specific uh, suggestions for your own practice. And I may do that right there at no charge, or there may be a charge up to $500 if I'm going to be able to increase your income thousands. Another way I can help you is I publish a monthly eight page newsletter for the last 26 years. Uh, it goes out to I don't know how many thousands of people in the country. Um, and it has all kinds of information about not only billing and coding, but HIPAA, uh, ERISA. And that's, in fact, I just have another book coming out in July this, this month on ERISA, on how to make insurance carriers pay even when they don't want to. Uh, how to stop the insurance carriers from recouping instantly uh, with a single fax to the CEO, letting them know that it's illegal for them to do so if it's a commercial carrier and it's a ERISA claim, which... More than 80% of the claims you file every day are your risk of claims outside of Medicare, as well as other advice on the coding and billing in another book I wrote called The Unfiltered Guide to Medical Office Management. And all of this is available at my website at donself.com um, so to help to make it easier for you. I do thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this webinar. 
if you want additional information, you can go to my website, domself.com. It's had over four, I think we're approaching four and a half million visits. And it's got hundreds of free documents, forms, appeal letters, uh, fee schedules, everything on it is free. Help yourself on that. Uh, and then you can also email me at donself at donself.com or give us a telephone call at the number on the screen. Thank you again for allowing us to help you.